Welcome back friends to my playthrough of Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we checked in with our party members after we finished our mission on Noveria and we also went over the secondary codex entries that we have accumulated up until then. And yeah, as we had expected, there were not so much updates as to the conversation we had with our party members. Only Caden and Ashley got new conversations about the last mission, because they always do. And also Liara, due to uh, what happened with her and her mother during the Noveria mission. Oh, and also Joker because he always got that little uh, conversation update in the beginning of his dialogue after every mission. And yeah, as for the secondary codex entries, we went over uh, explanations regarding the biology of each of, not each, but of most of the uh, races that inhabits the uh, Milky Way galaxy. And then we also learned more about space combat tactics and also how the extranet works. So yeah, those are always interesting. And so the last episode, as I mentioned before, may very well be the last SC episode. From here on out, I think we're gonna if we are still getting more secondary codex entries, I reckon they would be uh, fewer and further between compared to what it was before. So I think we're gonna go over them as they come, like the primary ones as well. And also at the last episode, I mentioned that we are gonna go do assignments for this episode and the next. And probably after that, we're gonna go uh, to our mis mission on Vermeer. So, <laughs> the first half of that statement is true. The last, I found out that it is not true regarding the mission on Vermeer because it seems like we have more assignments to do than just the four that are here. Uh, let me explain. So we have those four assignments, right? And let's open the gal galaxy map. Let's zoom out. And as I mentioned before, in this episode, we are gonna go travel to the Maroon Sea Cluster, a cluster to which we've never traveled to before. But I noticed that there's actually at least this one cluster that I've been I haven't been to either. But there's no assignment taking place in this cluster that we know of so far. Now what I'm thinking is there's probably an assignment we're probably gonna get an assignment as we travel to the cluster because we've had that happen to us. Uh couple of times at this point and also we have this cluster asteroid x57 now I haven't spoiled myself or anything but I remember that this is the place where one of the DLC takes place uh, I think the name of the DLC is uh, bring down the sky so <laughs> clearly we've got more more to do between uh, where we are right now and the mission on Vermeer. So I don't think we're just gonna have two episodes in between the mission on Noveria and then the mission on Vermeer. So what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna go in this episode we're gonna go here to the Maroon Sea Cluster. If there's more time, we're gonna do more assignments, of course. And after we took care of the four assignments that we got right now, we're gonna go to the Styx 
Theta Cluster and then we're gonna go do the Bring Down the Sky DLC and then we're, we're gonna go to the to Vermeer. So definitely it's gonna take more than two episodes I think. Probably gonna be like four or possibly even five. But yeah, that's my plan and it's still a king change but for right now we are heading to the Maroon Sea Cluster to take care of two assignments at least. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get right back into the game. And yeah, we always travel to the system that the cursor firstly positioned itself on. So we're gonna travel to the Caspian system. Oh, this is our first time seeing this cutscene of leaving Noveria. Hmm, now that we left Noveria, I wonder if I should have explored like Port Hanshan first but then again I wonder what would be updated because back on Pharaohs we did something like that well that is because the mission didn't uh, immediately bring us back to the Normandy unlike what happened on Noveria and then we could talk with the uh, colonists on Jus Hope about well the aftermath of the mission but I'm not sure if that would be the case for Noveria, seeing as the... How should I say? The main mission didn't really affect people in Port Hanshin, I, I don't think. But... Yeah, we can make some time to travel back to Noveria eventually. But for now, we're gonna... Move on with our exploration of the Caspian system and... Also the uh, Maroon Sea Cluster at large. So, we always start with the innermost orbit, and we actually already found a point of interest. So, let's travel to the MSV Cornucopia. The Cornucopia is a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. While obviously adrift, the Cornucopia is not broadcasting any distress call. Pretty sure boarding the cornucopia is tied to some assignment, which we always put on hold until we explore everything in the system and the cluster actually. So we're gonna zoom out for now and we're gonna investigate this asteroid belt, asteroid field. Oh, <laughs> the MSV cornucopia is the point of interest for this asteroid field. So now let's travel to the planet Clotanka. Clotanka is a large but low density terrestrial world with an atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Its crust is composed of sulfur and unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of heavy metals, usually the result of meteor strikes, dot the surface. High-speed winds powered by the hot blue star Caspian present a constant hazard. Atmospheric entry is hazardous and EVAs are discouraged. I forgot what EVAs are. Okay. Take a look at the orbital period which is very long considering this is the innermost orbit and also the surface temperature very hot very hot okay let's survey the planet we, sur we detected a uh, small deposit of iridium very nice 
Now traveling to the planet Farnuri. Farnuri has a trace atmosphere of carbon dioxide and helium. The surface is mainly composed of silica laced with iron oxides, indicating the world had a, an oxygenated atmosphere at some time in the past. Given the relative youth of the blue star Caspian and the significant gravity well of Farnuri, this must have occurred with astonishing swiftness, perhaps a result of some cataclysmic event. Further research is required. Okay, let's survey this planet as well. We surveyed, we detected a large deposit of gold. Very nice. Now we travel to the planet Almarcrux. Almarcrux has an atmosphere of methane and ethane. Despite its great distance from Caspian, the energetic young star heats the surface almost temperate levels. Thick ground fogs are common at the Terminator, where water ice frozen during the long dark side night meets the warm air masses from the day side. The crust is mainly composed of copper, with deposits of sodium. Almarcrux's abundant water and relatively mild temperature and gravity have placed it on the short list of terraforming candidate worlds. However, there is significant opposition from eco-ethics groups who assert that Almarcrux's primitive methanotropic bacteria may be a precursor to a full-fledged native ecology. Okay. Now why would... Why would the star Caspian especially heats this planet to temperate levels because Farnuri, the innermost neighbor of this planet, has a surface temperature surface temperature of like minus double digit Celsius. Maybe I'm missing something in the on the uh, planet profile, but yeah. Interesting. We cannot survey the planet, so let's now travel to the planet Antida. Antida is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. Its, as its atmosphere is darkened by traces of sodium. It is one of relatively few planets known with an orbital period of more than a millennium. Wow. Okay. Let's survey the planet. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of Antida revealed a group of defunct turrets orbiting the planet. The recon team carefully retrieved one of the turrets and brought it on board. Tally dismantled the weapon and found it was marked with a Carthan outpost insignia. Okay, that's about it for the Caspian system. Now we travel to the Matano system. Okay, let's travel to the planet Inti. Inti is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere composed of ammonia and helium. Its surface is mainly composed of sodium oxide with deposits of magnesium. Its density is rather low, leaving the planet tide leaving the planet tide locked to Matano. Inti is an unremarkable world, drawing little more than a cursory scan for surface pirate anchorages when Alliance patrols enter the system. Okay, we cannot survey the planet, so let's move on and travel to the planet Casca. Casca is a large but low-density world, fundamentally similar to its inner neighbor Inti. Like Inti, Casca is tidally locked to Matano. The same side always faces the sun, resulting in a scorching day side and a frozen night side. In the temperate areas around the Terminator, temperatures average around 30 Celsius. 
Combined with a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, this slender band of habitable terrain allows limited colonization by humans. Casca's ring is unique. It appears to be, for lack of a better term, a massive piece of alien installation art. The rings are made of small pieces of synthetic material and are almost invisible from space. From the ground, they catch and scatter the light of Matano in picturesque ways. It is not known who created the ring or when. Casca is very early development, with little more than a few pioneer teams scattered across the surface. Information is being coll collated about native hazards and ecology, while a massive colonist recruiting drive is gearing up back on Earth. Colony founded just this year, 2183, population of 150. Okay. Very interesting how this planet has like a band of habitable environment. Very interesting. And that uh, this planet prof profile proves our not even an assumption it's more like like a factual observation that exp when we drive the mako we only you know you only survey part of the uh, planet and not the whole unlike in games like no man's sky for example okay we're gonna eventually land on casca but not now and let's examine this ooh hoo, hoo, already let's examine this asteroid field and we found a uh, metallic asteroid and we discovered a large deposit of platinum it's a heavy metal and that's seems to be about it for this asteroid field. Now we travel to the planet Apo. A craggy world of igneous and basaltic mountains, Apo is racked by constant geologic activity. While volcanic hotspots are rare, continental plates are constantly piling up new mountains, subducting old ones or causing slips along transform fault. Apo has a dense atmosphere composed of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Due to the constant earthquakes and landslide activity, surface exploration is not advised. The rubble-covered wrecks of a half-dozen expeditionary ships stand in mute testament to the planet's instability. We cannot survey the planet, so we're gonna travel to the planet Ilapana. Oh wow. This planet's a looker. Ilapa is a hydrogen helium gas giant with an unusual ruby color caused by contaminants in the atmosphere. The world has over 120 moons, one of the highest totals, totals of all known systems. Once full development of Casca colony begins, a helium-3 refining infrastructure will be developed in the Ilapa system, concentrated on the large ice moon of Konyraya. Okay, so the ruby color that fascinates me is actually caused by contaminants. I kind of feel bad for the planet. And also interesting how the planet profile referred to this planet as an Ilapa system. As in the planet and the moons, maybe? Because this is definitely not a star system, this is a planet. Maybe it's a. It is referred like that. Like, astronomy wise, I'm not sure. Okay, let's investigate this asteroid field. Or, okay. We found a rocky asteroid. Wait, okay. 
<laughs> I got confused. I thought we could not travel to the asteroid. This asteroid has an unusually sculpted and artistic appearance with many long, sweeping curves. Prothean data disk recovered. While scanning the asteroid field in the Matano system, you discovered a badly damaged ship. The recon team found no survivors on board, but they did find a Prothean data disk. Okay. Let's investigate the rest of this asteroid field, just in case we have another point of interest. Doesn't seem like it. Now we travel to the planet Supay. Supai. Supay. Supay has the composition of an ice dwarf planet, but is unusually large for such a body. It has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The frozen surface is dotted with deposits composed of potassium and light metals brought to the surface by cryovolcanic processes. Supay's icy surface was often used as a source of potable water by passing merchant vessels. Since the Alliance claimed the inner system world of Casca, satellites placed in orbit automatically bill any vessel landing on the world for the mass of water removed from the surface. Exogeny has had a difficult time keeping these satellites operational. They often meet with accidents caused by impact with jettisoned ship debris. Probably the work of the people who want to, you know, get some water without paying to the satellites. Let's survey the planet and we detected a large deposit of magnesium, a light metal. That would be it for Matano system for now and we travel to the Vostok system. Okay, first we travel to the planet Clomarthu. Clomarthu has a reducing atmosphere of methane and nitrogen. The surface, is, the surface is hot and mainly composed of sodium with deposits of uranium. In terms of size and orbit, Clomarthu is a virtual twin of Earth, but utterly lacks life. Interesting. I wonder how many twins of Earth we have discovered by 2183. Now we travel to the planet, n the planet Nodacrux. Oh. Looks like we've got an active distress beacon on the planet below, Commander. No message, just a locator signal. There you go. Nodacrux is a verdant world with abundant water, temperate climate, a thick nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, and a rich ecosystem. It would seem to be perfect for life. The, rela the, rela the relatively high percentage of oxygen makes humans feel energized and alive, though it has also allowed insect analogs to grow to frightful sizes. Unfortunately, Nodacrux is a case of almost not quite. Thunderstorms are as common as on Earth, but in Nodacrux's thicker, oxygen-rich atmosphere, they are deafening and spark constant wildfires. More damning, however, are the large and ubiquitous tufts of pollen that float on the high-pressure air. In humans and other oxygen-breathing species, they cause severe or lethal, lethal allergic reactions. Interesting. As the planet profile said, another case of almost not quite. Like Eletania. So let's zoom out for now and investigate this asteroid field. For a metallic asteroid. We 
Reveal a large deposit of palladium, a heavy metal. And now we travel to the planet Alco. The geological properties of Alco have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. A fairly typical mix outer system terrestrial of rock and ice, Alco has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its crust is composed of silicates and water ice with deposits of aluminum. Unregistered starship traffic has been recorded in the vicinity of this planet. Travel is not advised. Okay. <laughs> then we're gonna travel to another planet, which is Pataton. Potato? <laughs> A rather small hydrogen helium gas giant, Pataton's Pataton's atmosphere contains large quantities of chlorine. Matriarch's writings recover. Scans of Pataton revealed a strange unmanned vessel in orbit around the planet. Tally brought it on board and determined it was sorry made but very old. She discovered several ancient artifacts inside the vessel, including one of Matriarch Dilinaga's writings. Okay, now I don't quite remember <laughs> where our assignments are exactly taking place in this cluster, so I'm gonna exit first. And we're gonna check our journal. Uh, oh, this one got updated. You have received a generic distress call coming from a small research facility founded by Exogeny in the Maroon Sea Cluster. Okay, so this one takes place in Nodacrux. And... This one takes place in the Matano system. And we also have the option of boarding the... Uh, I already forgot the name of the starship. In the Caspian system. Okay, and we are very close to finishing this assignment. Only one light medal is left. Very nice. Okay, then let's land on a Nodacrux first, since we're already in the system. Okay. Okay, uh, it's been a while and this planet is almost but not quite habitable by humans, so I'm gonna go with Caden and Ashley. This beautiful, beautiful world. Okay, now, yep, we haven't leveled up Caden and Ashley just yet, so let's do that. And, ooh, six points. Six points. Okay, we're gonna try to get, oh, we already got the Master Neural Shock. Mm, where do we go with Caden? We're gonna get like 16 points, including the 6 we have now. Mm. Oh, we're, we've been going down the throw talent. So let's maximize this. We got Master Throw. Increases the size and strength of the mass effect field and allows you to throw more often. Very nice. And we got three more for now. I don't think I'm gonna maximize decryption and electronics since we got the master version of the associated powers for each of these talents. 
and I'm gonna not gonna do so for first aid either. We get 13 more and we can max out lift and barrier. And the other three points can go somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna get... I'm gonna maximize lift first. And we can max it out next time we level up. And also six points for Ashley. Hmm... Do we go sniper rifles or do we go shotguns? We also got 16 points. So unfortunately we cannot go max out both shotguns and sniper rifles. In fact, that is unfortunate indeed. We actually would me would be short one point in maxing out both shotguns and sniper rifles if i'm counting this correctly oh, this is this is hurting me right now <laughs> oh my god Oh, this is hurting me, guys. Okay, you know what? We got six points, right? We're gonna get the advanced version of both sniper rifles and shotguns, that's for sure. So let's get the advanced assassination first. One, two, three, four, five. Advanced assassination increases assassination damage bonus. And then one point on shotgun. Thank you very much. And Shepard's already leveled up. And now we save our game just in case something wrong happens. We are already seeing some enemies to that direction. And the planet profile did say that insects grow very large in this planet. So let's pull our map first. This is our destination. And we are gonna go clockwise. So I'm gonna go here-ish first. And then we're gonna go here and then we're gonna end on the uh, main destination. So I'm gonna go... I'm always trying to go to the lowlands. So we're gonna go here first, right? Maybe we want to take care of whatever this is. Let's do that first. It's been a while since we last explored the planet. And driving the Mako around. By driving the Mako around, I suppose. Thorian Creeper? All the way out here. We're quite far away from Pharaohs though. This is very unexpected. Are they somehow... Did they somehow come here from Pharaohs, or does this planet has its own has its own version of the Thorian? But that is seems to be very unlikely because the Thorian is a very ancient being and all that. I would I get the impression that it is one of a kind, but maybe uh that's that's a, a wrong impression. Oh, heart decryption. Okay. Wow. That was... Long indeed. Easy decryption. Mm. 
Very nice. Yeah, in between episodes, I... Well, I updated our equipments and all that. And I checked... Uh, how much money we got. And at that point, we got like... Over 5 million credits. And I was like... Oh, this is nice. But then I checked out uh, the uh, Normandy... Uh, quartermaster. Is that the term? <laughs> anyway, I checked the shop on Normandy and... We got... We can buy the level 10 equipments now. And they are 500,000 credits apiece. And I was like, okay. We're just never gonna be that comfortable in terms of money in this game, huh? Yeah, I vaguely remember not shopping all that much the first time I played this game all those years ago. But yeah, I wonder what the max level of the equipments are. Probably 10, right? So maybe one of these days we're gonna be able to start shopping. Not that I'm particularly disappointed with our equipments or anything like that. Okay. Over where actually? Anyway, that was quite the detour. Now we're gonna try to make our way towards our destination. Oh, this is quite the challenging terrain too, huh? Really reminds me of Elitania. You know, in a lot of ways, this planet is kind of like a uh, twin of Elitania, right? Kind of like how that one planet... I think the innermost planet in this system is a twin of Earth in some regard. We got some air time back there. Vertical <laughs> air time. I may have chosen a very challenging path towards our destination, I think. So far, we've been handling it, unlike back on press row. We couldn't quite handle that part. I still remember that exploration we did. Oh boy. What of you? I take it as a reward for that exploration. Okay. Just wait a bit, Mako. Wait a bit. Okay. The Mako can't wait, but yeah. Before we drop, let's go this way. I see the mineral deposit on the minimap, but not. Vis visually in the uh, well real life I suppose Ooh. the Miko just slid down we didn't even I uh, like step on the throttle a little bit and it just slides down okay wouldn't you know it it's not on the bottom of this place and now we have to climb back up I think we can do it from here though. Go! Oh. Hmm. 
Maybe from here? Oh, okay, okay. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Come on. Almost. Oh my god. Are we trapped? I don't think so. Let's go here. Come on. Almost. Almost. Very nice. Okay, we kind of have a path over here. Okay. Okay, okay. Ooh. <laughs> Where are we going? Okay. <laughs> wow, the deposit is not anywhere near the challenging parts at all, I don't think. It's actually seem to be quite accessible. <laughs> or maybe not. Let's see, let's see. Oh my god. We can go from here, I bet. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. Come on, Mako. Huh. Wait a minute. Are we supposed to climb this mountain some other way? I don't think so. Come on. I, I was... I'm trying to launch the Miko on that. Hmm. Well, that part that juts out. Like that. Hmm. Is this not the way to approach this? Maybe we need to go from the other side or something. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to come from there. Let's pull out our map first. Oh, I wonder if the deposit will be marked on the map. Uh, not likely. Wait, not, not likely. It's actually not there. Okay, let's go like this then. Oh, <laughs> already failed. Hmm. I may have to take it back regarding this planet may be actually more challenging than press rock in some ways. Okay, we need to go over this part, right? Let's not lose direction of where we need to go at the very least okay 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 now let's let's pull up the map now okay so it's somewhere around here where would we need to go like this like this, maybe? Or maybe like this? This is... Yeah, the, the, the direct way doesn't seem to be the easiest way. It really doesn't seem to be. Oof! Ooh, almost, Miko! Okay! Very nice. That's a progress. That's a progress indeed. Uh, okay, just where are you? Okay, okay, this is manageable. That drop was manageable, I think. Okay. Come on. I really wonder how I did all of this without the horizontal boost even with the horizontal boost it's really hard okay finally we arrived and it's a cobalt deposit i really hope this is the 
last piece that we need. That would make it all worthwhile. Very nice. That slight metal. Yes, sir. We actually finished the mission. That's kind of nice, actually. <laughs> With how hard it is, it kind of really marked the occasion, I think. So, where was it? Where was that? Yep. Survey is complete. Very nice. We're still gonna go after them, I think, because we get some reward, right? Some rewards for doing so, and I don't think we'll stop getting those rewards just because the survey is complete. At least I, ho I hope not. And we actually collected all the... Uh, Prothean artifacts, Anturian emblems. That's very nice. So we only have the Asari writings and the uh, League medallions to look for. Nice. That's some much needed good news right there. Okay, now... Where do we go from here? Hmm, wait, 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 wait. Hmm, let me think, right? We, I think, can go here maybe? Because we, we came from over here, right? I think we saw whatever we need to see on the western side of this area. But again, we're gonna end with the main destination, so let's just go to the debris for now, I think. I wonder how we're doing on time. Oh, okay. I think because of... Uh Because we took quite a lot of time getting that mineral deposit. I think even finishing the assignments on this cluster would be pushing it in terms of time, but I'll try, I'll try. Maybe getting down the mountain was a mistake. I hope at least it's not as big of a mistake as I thought it was. Uh, yep, it seems to be comparable to what I imagined. Okay, let's think about this realistically. We may need to... We may need to take the way around, so maybe we just go to the anomaly first. Oh my god. Okay, at least we're not stuck. We gotta count our blessings, I think. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's cruise along the uh, agreeable terrain. Let's not push our luck. So far, I prefer Elitania than this planet, being twins and all. Elitania has a more agreeable terrain, has that very cool Prothean artifact, that sphere, that we can only activate using the trinket we got from uh, Shaira, the Asari consort on the citadel. By the way, that was quite a nice air time we got there. <laughs> quite smooth. Ooh. Yeah, I really wonder how I did all this using just the gas pedal and the vertical boost. I rarely even use the vertical boost these days. 
uh, not these days, I mean, by these days, I mean, like in this version. Is it just a, oh, that's just the border of the map, okay. Whoa. Because I distinctly remember doing all of this before even <laughs> like going to Theorem. Possibly. <laughs> That's just how I approach my games. Most, if not all the time. Oh wow, that was quite the bumpy section, huh? Again, I would have. If I'm inside the uh, Mako right now, I would have painted the interior with my lunch. Okay, let's recover the ancient debris. Torian insignia recover. This, es this escape pod is half buried in material that has washed down from the mountains. Though it has obviously been here for centuries, the computer still has power. Linking in with your heart suit, you recover a batch of files containing data on the Thra Thracia colony. Thras Thracia? Okay. Nice, we still got reward from discovering this stuff. Okay, now let's go make our approach to the debris. Come on now. Wow, that was quite the view. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, wait, wait, let's not repeat our mistake. Okay, seems like we need to go from here. Wait, the shifty looking cows? From... Oh, I forgot the name of the planet now. We ran them over last time. <laughs> Let's not repeat the same mistake. And they stole our money too. I wonder if they are the same species. We cannot interact with them though. And they got no HUD. Like, the HUD says nothing about them. Unlike last time. Okay, let's salvage this crashed probe. Nice. I'll take it. Yeah, one thing I noticed noticed from uh, updating our equipment in between episodes is that uh, this last time that we did that, we upgrade a lot of our weapons. But not so much uh, weapon upgrades and armor. We upgrade a lot of our weapons and armor upgrades and all that. But yeah, not so much weapon upgrades and armor. But 
but we started to get some upgrades back there. Thorian creepers again. Wait. Is Exogeny? Oh. <laughs> Colonizing this planet? I'm not sure. I think one of the... Uh... Wait, I think they are. I remember one of the planet profiles mentioned Exogeny. If this is indeed the planet that has such planet profile, then it would explain a little bit why we're seeing Thorian Creepers. Let me pull up my journal, actually. Yeah, okay, okay, makes sense. You have received a generic distress call coming from a small research facility founded by Exogeny in the Maroon Sea Cluster. Okay. This is kind of like a mini throwback to the Pharaoh's mission then. Interesting. Oh, what's that sound? To me. Okay, I think we should have our weapons ready, guys. Okay, yeah, if we're dealing with Thorian Creepers, yeah, the Shepard's gonna rock the shotgun. And we're gonna save first, just in case we cannot take whatever's inside this building. We cannot take on whatever's inside the building. Nice, everyone's with us Rally now. Round. Last time we did a mission with Caden and Ashley, Ashley was not particularly in a participating mood. Not that's not the case this time around. She's gonna she's gonna show us what she's made of. Okay, upgrade kit. Nice. This is kinda like a storefront or something, right? Alright? At least in the citadel, this, yeah, something like this would be used as a uh, storefront. I wonder what this facility is. Okay, that is creepy. Ugh. Okay, okay, look at that many enemies we got down on the minimap. Pop immunity right away. Come here. Carnage, Ashley, uh, immunity for you. Caden, barrier for you. Come here. Yep. Uh, what, what are they shooting at? Maybe shotgun is not the right call. Not the m most appropriate call. Neural shock this guy. Caden and activate overkill. Ashley. Ooh. 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 Come on. Come on. That was All targets down. That was quite good. Somehow we funneled them in a single file. And our strategy paid off really nicely, somehow. Yeah, the stars really aligned for that one. Okay. I wonder what this is all about though. So the Thorian infected them and they, like, unbeknownst to these people and they already moved here and then they turned into Thorian creepers here. Something like that. 
that's how it worked, right? If I remember correctly. The Thorian can control minds and... Actually, I don't remember. really remember how it creates the creepers. Okay. Level 9 weapons. Very nice. Oh, what happened here? Now we saw corpses in similar conditions back on Pharaohs, I remember. Sludge canister. Okay. By the way, I didn't and wouldn't have expected that the uh, green would be shepherd's luck for our playthrough. <laughs> Rescuers? Oh, thank. See? I told you somebody would come to investigate that signal. My name is Dr. Ross, Chief Exogeny Researcher at this facility. We've been trapped in this room for days. We're almost out of food and water. You got here just in time. Mm, you're okay now. I need to know what's going on. Why is this place crawling with Thorian creepers? How do you know about the Thorian? I've seen it. I know what Exogeny was up to. I saw what they let the Thorian do to those colonists, so I destroyed it. Our secret's out then. No point in my lying. You already know the worst. The creepers here were created using altered samples from the specimens on Pharos. Oh. We discovered a way to turn them into docile, obedient servants. Oh. Everything was no. going fine until a few days ago. Then all the creepers suddenly went berserk. Only a handful of us made it back into the safety of this room. Why would they even begin to experiment on such things? <sighs> okay, let's go like this. Why didn't you send a clear message asking for help? All we had was that signal from the emergency beacon. This is a closed communications base. Exogeny was worried about someone on the project selling secrets to a rival firm or reporting our work to the authorities. Yeah, I figured. We have no direct communication with the outside, only the emergency beacon. It sends a general distress signal to the Exogeny site on Pharos. They're supposed to send a team to respond inside of 24 hours, but it sounds like they had problems of their own. Oh, they did. If I remember correctly. Yeah, they did. Any chance some of the other people at the base might still be alive? Hmm, I doubt it. Too many creepers out there. They never stood a chance. We're the only ones left. Any idea why they turned on you? Maybe there was still some kind of link between the creepers and the Thorian back on Pharos. That would make sense, yes. The Thorian was unlike any other life form we've ever studied. I can't explain how, but maybe when it died, it, it somehow set off the creepers here. Oh. Okay, we kind of have have a hand in this then. I've heard all I need to. Look, I know what we did here was wrong. I'll admit that. But it's over now. There's no sense reporting this to the authorities, right? You were in charge of this project. The safety of the staff was your responsibility. They trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Be reasonable. I didn't mean for this to happen. Besides, how does it help anyone if I end up in jail? Normally, Exogeny would have my back, but it sounds like they're going to have their hands full cleaning up the mess on Pharos. But I've got money. A nice little emergency fund I set up. It's yours if you let us go. I mean, how much are we talking about, though? 
Because so far... I'm gonna be honest, so far... <laughs> in terms of monetary rewards... I haven't been impressed. Let's just say that. I have not been impressed. Okay. <sighs> and I checked our <laughs> Paragon point, uh, Paragon gauge, and we actually maxed it out. We actually maxed it out. Now, I don't know if this is one of those situations where the points kept going, but the bar is just maxed out like that. Like the bar can't keep up with the points or anything like that. But I think we're kind of good. Like, I'm not gonna <laughs> totally turn on Shepard's character now, but I'm just saying we can. We have the, the room to go be more renegade. <laughs> But I don't know if we're gonna do that. But this also makes sense though. This also makes sense. This doesn't really make sense. Like both of these says the same things, I think. It's yours if you let us go. can't do that I should kill you right now which one guys <laughs> which one you know what I think I think it makes sense for this one we've been on Pharaohs we've seen where this led up to and the attitude about this very nonchalant I think we can go this one this isn't about money it's about justice blood for blood uh, that's not going to happen. Open fire. Open fire! <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if we say I can't do that, though. Okay, let's go, Kaden. Let's go. Immunity for you. Or maybe let's start with barrier, right? <sighs> maybe shotgun is not the right call. We'll find out. Okay, uh, that's not too bad. Kaden, neural shock, my guy, and then have your overkill up, Ashley. Oh, what was that? I'm gonna change to. Come on now, Kaden, lift. How, how come the lift didn't work? Then throw. Ooh. <laughs> Kaden's really cool. He's so versatile. Kaden, neural shock, this guy. I'm gonna pop immunity. Ooh. Exogeny's second rate mercs proved no match for a trained Alliance Marine. With the last of the science crew dead, there's no reason to linger here. I think we got him, Commander. <laughs> now I wonder if that's even worth it since doing that didn't didn't even get us like, I don't know, renegade points or something like that. <laughs> uh, I just wanna I don't know, I just want, I, I do admit that I want to explore more options now that we maxed out the Paragon bar. And I do think it kind of makes sense for us to go that way. Rally round. Due to the aforementioned reasons. And yeah, let me show you guys. See, the Paragon option, the Paragon bar is like maxed out. So I think we're gonna be fine, and not to mention we got this. But yeah, to be fair, 
the talent description says that uh, charm options and conversations will be grayed out if you do not have a high enough skill rank. Uh, wait, what? I think there was something about... Maybe I was mistaken. New skill ranks will unlock when you become a Spectre and as you earn Paragon points. Okay, maybe that was it. So, I remember paying extra attention to this one back on Pharaohs actually because at that point we only have 10 and there was one option being grayed out. And we needed to get to 12, I think. Yeah, uh, the option that led that led up to uh, the death of Ethan Zhang. I mean, uh, the fact that we were unable to pick the choice led up to the death of Ethan Zhang. But then again, I remember we had a similar occurrence where at that point we actually had 12 charm. But the option was still grayed out and it, it was quite recent, I think. Maybe back on Noveria? I don't quite remember. Oh yeah, it was when we were talking with Fargus, right? We cannot charm him for some reason and, and at that point, for sure, we were already at 12 charm. And at that point, I thought the reason why is because we don't have enough points to go with the charm option but I don't know maybe I'm mistaken but again as we can see here maybe we actually got some renegade points because if I remember correctly we used to have no points at all in the renegade bar now we're starting to see some points <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm kind of excited <laughs> okay let's return to Normandy but again, the template is still Space Steve Rogers, guys. But even then, Captain America, you know, had some changes, had some arcs. He had a character arc throughout the three movies, the three Captain America movies, so... Yeah, we're still gonna go mainly Paragon, though. That I can assure you. Okay, now we travel to... I'm thinking we travel back to the Matano system. And land on... Casca, was it? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this is not taking too much time. We passed the one hour mark, but I'm just gonna go with one more because we actually got assignments with for these two, right? Whereas for the MSV, I really forget the name. We haven't actually discovered the assignment itself. Okay, who to bring? Let's not bring Liara just yet. I think I'm gonna give her some time to process what happened on the last mission and let's bring the boys Rex and Garrus uh Garrus and Rex <laughs> I always choose the party members in the order that they joined our party I know it really doesn't matter the order we chose them with it's just my OCD kicking in we're gonna accept the squad another beautiful planet save our game again oh let's level everybody up first eight points for Rex and I think no points for Gary since we actually brought him on our last mission okay I kind of forgot how I plan to level Rex I think
let's level up throw and combat armor how does that sound that sounds nice actually for me master throw increases the size and strength of the mass effect field and allows you to throw more often great and combat armor please master shield boost restores even bigger portion of shield we're gonna get only 10 more points with Rex though 10 more points huh I think for maximum tankiness we can max out like barrier and then fitness I don't know if we're gonna go that way though because I kind of want to go max max out shotgun Maybe we mix and we max out fitness and any shotgun, something like that. Yeah, probably where I'm gonna go with Rex. Okay, everybody's leveled up. We now save our game. Okay, let's pull up the map. Oh, we got quite a lot of main destinations. Okay, if we're going to go clockwise, let's go here-ish then. I'm not trying to go down the lowlands because I had I have a feeling if I go down there, I'm just gonna go <laughs> towards the main objective anyway. Let's go! Oh my god! Tall, steep cliffs already. Let's power through this Mako. Okay. Clearly not the best idea already. Yep. Oh. That is quite viable actually. Boosting perpendicular to the orientation of this. The uh, cliff. We really build up momentum that way. Oh, and roll deposit. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh, okay. Yeah, at this point we only do this for do this for the uh, rewards, but we kind really kind of need the money. So, well, maybe not really need the money, but I don't think we can be comfortable with money yet. You know? Oh, another mineral deficit. Oh, that's at the very edge of the map. Oh. <laughs> we almost fell all the way down. Hmm? Where is it? Oh wait, where is it? Oh! Oh, okay. We cannot even exit the Mako. Okay. Oh! Plutonium. Where do we go from here? Hmm. Do we just go over here now? Yeah, let's start making our way towards the anomaly. Oh, 
come on, yes. Does not, this does not look good. Oh, okay. Let's just go here. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Animals, shifty looking cows on two planets back to back, like the ones in Nodacrux. No information about them showed up on our HUD, but they don't steal our money either, so I think that's good. They're very creepy though, the way that they have small hands on top of the other limbs they already have oh oh my god what was this what is this driving okay how far are we from this okay we should stay oh <laughs> i was just gonna say we should stay in the highlands then and then we find this mineral deficit Okay. Where are you? It's blinding. Oh, that was quite the view, though. Okay. This is quite the view, guys. Not a very photogenic. Positioning of the Mako, but look at that. It's quite blinding, but beautiful nonetheless. Oh, what is that? I think that's one of our main uh, destination, huh? Wait, where is this mineral deposit? Ugh. Uh, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have done that. Where is this thing? Maybe it's in the bottom of this. Oh, place. Ooh. It is indeed. <laughs> okay, beryllium deposit. exactly what we're gonna do Rex okay let's keep making our way towards the anomaly come on nice great use of momentum there if I do say so myself come on okay we can go around here. Yep. We're seeing the anomaly in on our minimap. Oh, okay. That's not good. <sighs> this isn't good. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh. <gasps> that was quite the uh, collision. But yeah, we can go down here, I think. Ooh. Oh, come on.
Ooh, okay. We somehow made our way back up here. Ooh, pyramid. I always love finding these ones. This is our third one by, by now. Okay. Nice. Can't wait to update our equipments again after this episode. Oh, we can even recover this crate. Recovering artifact. Prothean data disk recovered. There are several small Prothean artifacts in the crate, including an intact Prothean data disk. It appears to be in excellent condition. Mm -hmm. Let's go around the camp. Let's get on top of the pyramid. Hmm, can't do much on the top. <laughs> Garrus is looking like a deity of some kind there. <laughs> uh, good for you, Garrus. Good for you. Okay then. I thought we were going to put the artifact we recovered from the, the crate on top of the pyramid or something like that. Fortunately, that was not the case. Okay, moving on to the debris. Oh, ho, ho, ho. let's be smart about this. Let's be smart about this. Okay, we're gonna go around. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Ooh. did some kind of trick there. Uh, somehow it worked. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Spoke too soon, spoke too soon. Oh, no, oh, no. Okay. Come on. Oh, so close. Come on. Okay. Nice. Okay. I wonder... I think I mentioned this before. I wonder how... Speedrunners, especially in the 100% category, category, uh, well, speedrun this game, especially these parts. I would imagine that they just simply know the uh, optimal path through years and years of practice. Come on now. <laughs> What is happening here, Mako? Oh no, oh no. Okay, maybe all of that was... Yep, that was all unnecessary. 
it's actually in a low elevation place all of that was unnecessary oh my god oh my god <laughs> I feel dumb now okay let's salvage this crash probe Okay, and let's get into the Mako now. Now we start going to our main destinations, guys. Let's just proceed as we go, right? Now, for example, we see this one. Now we're gonna go towards it. I've got a bad feeling about this. Ooh, Star Wars reference. Husk. The entire colony must have been transformed. Okay, but where are the dragon's teeth? Oh, here they are. Actually, okay, we're dealing with the Kieth apparently. We're gonna be relying on Garrus quite a lot, I imagine. Oh my god, look at all these dragon's teeth all around the place. Okay, first building, let's get inside, boys. If we are dealing with husks, oh no, but Rex is with us, so let's entrust the shotgun to him. Okay, and let's save our game. Actually, let's look our at our journal first. UNC Colony of the Dead. Now that's how you name an assignment. The colonists of this world in the Matano system are the victims of a horrible mutation that has transformed them into mindless creatures. Fight your way through the hostile and transformed colonists while searching for survivors and clues. Okay. Interesting that that uh, description is written as if we don't know how people are transformed into geth when in fact we see that in one of the earliest cutscenes we see the whole process right okay okay get prepared guys yep uh let's start with barrier and uh immunity for me I think maybe not maybe not overkill anyway uh, Garrus overload I cannot pop out from there for some reason okay oh wow <laughs> Rex got the husk all the way back there from from all the way back there using a shotgun Come on. <laughs> I suppose they do got powers, huh? Uh, okay, okay. Let's kite them back here. Rex, throw this one. Very nice. Ooh. Gotta stop getting caught by surprise. Sabotage. Very nice. Ooh. Okay, if shields are down, then we simply have to use shield boost. We still got more of them. Guys, uh, Rex, Warp. Garrus. Uh, overload again. Oh, oh, Rex got that under control. I keep forgetting that Overload seems to interact with, like, hazards, right? Or maybe that's just due to the fact that, well, it explodes stuff. I really need to make use of that more. Okay, 
That was okay. It was like decent, but quite a lot of room for improvement, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah, this really is going to be one of those longer episodes, guys. I hope you're okay with that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we can't open this door. Let's go upstairs then. All of them are husks though, where are the geth that did this to them? And yeah, I really need to use grenades more, huh? Okay. Let's get this upgrade kit. Oh, just in case you guys are uh, wondering how we do this. Simply holster your weapon and then walk towards the crate and press X on PS4 and A on Xbox. Not sure how you guys would do that on PC though. Oh, we can't open this room either. Okay. You know what? Let's get down. Uh, from, yeah, via these crates. I think we can do that. You know what, in the original there's a prompt actually, telling you what you press to climb over these crates. Not the case for the legendary edition, not sure why. Okay, building one done. Moving on to building two now. We saw that one to the north, northwest. We're gonna go to that one now. No enemy this time around. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, that's another building though. You know what, let's go to that one first. I changed my mind again. <laughs> I thought the way to go there would be more straightforward. I was mistaken. Interesting that there are corpses in this condition when we have dragon's teeth over here. Maybe they fought back and got like and the Geth did that to them for fighting back or something like that. Okay. Let's just keep doing what we do, guys. Uh, save first, though. Oh, okay. Get ready. Over there. Over where? Oh. Uh, overload, Garris. Ooh. Ooh, they're quite tanky, guys. Rex, throw, I think. Hoo hoo. And use barrier on yourself. Oh, oh, oh. They're flanking us. They're flanking us. Uh, 
uh, curious, maybe uh, sabotage them and Rex use warp. Let's help Curious out. I imagine he would have some trouble dealing with foes in clo close range since he, he since he is rocking his sniper rifle. Okay, good, good, good. That worked out nicely. I thought there were more of them. But I guess our party members took care of the uh, other enemies. Okay. Cannot go to these rooms, huh? Guess that's the case for all the buildings on this planet. Oh, this is quite labyrinthine, if I'm to be honest. Oh, aid station. <laughs> we rarely ever use Medigel though these days, since everybody have like some sort of medical exoskeleton upgrade. Which is really nice. Everybody can regenerate their HP thanks to that upgrade. Which is how it's supposed to be, personally. I think so. Oh no, we're starting to see this notice guys, I guess I get some homework to do. Yeah, it's kind of making me worry that we need to salvage something, because we still got one building to go in which we can loot stuff. I don't think we can go down by climbing these crates. One last building. Hang in there guys, we're almost done. to this one actually that's the right call I think because had we gone to this uh, other building first the one with the enemies I wouldn't know as easily where to go next since then there would be two buildings with no enemies on it so we kind of save some time by going the route that we did. By virtue of knowing where we need to go. Okay, final building for this assignment, I believe. Oh, oh. <laughs> what is this driving? Check our weapons, yep. Let's save the game. Moving in.
Okay. Get ready, guys. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Ooh, here they come. Rex, warp that one. Garrus, sabotage. Ooh, we're kind of funneling them. Uh, Rex, barrier. Garrus Overload. Oh! Rex, ready your carnage, my guy. Ooh! Ah. Uh, damping on that one, Garrus. Rex, Rex, throw this one. Very nice. Oh! I shot Rex. Let's have our shields back up, please. Okay, we got them, I think. Whew. That was perhaps too frontal, but... Hey, it worked. <laughs> I thought of changing to shotgun, but Rex got it covered, as usual. Mm -hmm. Not much to loot out here, huh? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's go here first. Wow, this is simply an empty room. I wonder if there's some sort of trap or something like that. Apparently not. Let's go to this one then. Oh, let's start looting. Mm-hmm. We're really cutting it close here, guys. Ooh, foo -foo. Really cutting it close. That's all the loot, and now, finally, opening up this terminal. A colonial pioneer team rarely consists of more than a few dozen specialists. It's clear that none of them have survived. The Cerberus group has a lot to answer for here. Wait, this is Cerberus is doing? Wait, I wasn't aware that that's the case. What? Okay then. Really didn't think that we were gonna deal with servers again. Okay. 
think we are done for today. I thought about going to the uh, starship, the MSV. I forget the name, I'm sorry, but we are kind of cutting it close in terms of inventory and I don't want to have to manage our inventory during the episode. I think it will be way too much of a waste of time for you guys. So we're going to go back to the Normandy for now and we're going to wrap this episode up. And yeah, not to mention if we go to the Caspian system to take care of the starship, I think we're going to actually be over two hours long so just gonna go back to the normandy for now yeah this is clearly one of the longest non se episodes so far but that would be it for today so in this episode, we travel to the Maroon Sea Cluster. We explore, well, the cluster and all the systems inside it. And we took care of two assignments. In the Matano and the Vostok systems, if I remember their names correctly. In the next episode, we're gonna go travel to the Caspian system, board the uh, spaceship that I forgot the name of, and we're gonna go to other clusters to take on our other assignments. Probably we're gonna go back to Hades Gamma because we're gonna need to uh, explore only one more system, right? Since we've been to the Hades Gamma before. And maybe we'll visit the Styx Theta cluster as well. In the same episode after which we're gonna go do the uh, bring down the sky DLC so that's kind of roughly the plan uh, for the next couple episodes so thank you once again for watching all the way through the end of this video and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you on the next one so goodbye for now and I hope you have the greatest day See ya!